Namaste. Well, I have a really big, big, important announcement to make. That is, well, I have to back up a little bit and give this some context, okay? You know, at the age of 22, I took an acid trip in San Francisco and I had an experience of direct realization of Brahman. But because I had no knowledge, I couldn't recognize that experience and I actually suppressed the memory of it, even though it had a huge impact on my mind, personality, and even my body. So many years later in 1984, after meditating and after 20 years of service to my Adi Guru, I had another experience. And this one was undeniable because I was completely stone cold sober. <laughs> and again, I saw Brahman directly. And so this time I couldn't deny it. I had to go into it. I had to study it. I had to find out what was really going on, get to the bottom of it. So long story short, gradually I became a Buddhist monk and I lived for five years in a stone cottage in the mountains of Sri Lanka, just meditating. And this is when I started this channel. Well, that was about eight years ago. And then I came out from being a monk and I came back to India and I wandered looking for a place. I knew something was missing. I still didn't have all the answers. I still couldn't connect all the dots. So I went looking for something which I didn't know what it was. And I wound up in Tiruvannamalai and studying Advaita in the style of Ramana Maharshi. And I got so many blessings and profound realizations from all sides. And you can see the result of that on this channel. And just lately, over the last six months, I finally attained a full understanding of the realization that I got so many years ago, like 50 years ago now, wow. And now I have no more desires for spiritual advancement or enlightenment or anything. I feel complete. And that's a great feeling. But from the beginning, I always had in the back of my mind the desire to help others. And I think it was because I was raised in a very dysfunctional family. And early on, even at the age of 12, 13 years old, I started reading books on psychology to understand what was going on with me and the people around me. And I came to the conclusion that we were all crazy. <laughs> so I not only wanted to help myself, I wanted to help others around me because I understood that my condition was very much a function of their condition. And if they were crazy, they were going to drive me crazy. And I didn't want that. I wanted to be whole and sane. So I started studying different methods of self-realization, different methods of therapy and so on, and culminating in my doing like a year and a half of intensive primal therapy and uh, even writing some books about it. But this is all back in the old days, you know? What I've come to now, after studying not only the Vaishnava scriptures, but also the Buddha scriptures, and also the Shakta scriptures, and the Tantras, the real Tantras, not the phony Western Tantras, 
All these scriptures point to the same thing, which is that the root of all religions and the common factor among all religions, the esoteric truth at the basis of all religions and all spiritual paths is the goddess. Let that sink in for a minute. And the only reason we are suffering and the only reason the world is such a mess is that we don't worship the goddess. Now, very interestingly, as you know, I've been into many, many different spiritual paths and disciplines, studied many, many scriptures from many different traditions and sat with many masters. And I learned something from all of them. But the thing that stopped me from really connecting everything together was the fact that they are all taught as separate sectarian disciplines. The worship of the goddess is the only path I've ever found that is inclusive and includes all of the other traditions that I've ever studied the Vaishnava, the Shaiva, the Shakta, the Buddha, Bauda, huh? all the different paths that I studied are included within the worship of the goddess. And as it turns out, all of the uh, different practices that I've ever done are also included in the path of the goddess. So you have to really get into it. You know, you have to really go to the source spiritual literatures and study them deeply to realize all this. But I've done my homework. I have done the work really for the last 25 years, especially. That's all I've done. So you can imagine how many books I've read. It's probably close to 100,000 books. And after all that, and, and practicing it all too, and realizing it all, I have come to this conclusion. That the best thing that I can do for the welfare of the entire world is to teach the goddess tradition according to its original scriptures. And that will solve all our problems, both individual and collective and lead to a better world. And that's really the only thing I can find that has a large enough scope to address the real problems of the world today. So what this means is that from now on, I'm gonna leave everything that I've done up on the site. But from now on, I'm going to focus very deliberately on the goddess tradition, the Shakta tradition, as it's called, worship of Shakti. Shakti means the power, the power of God. So most religions worship a male God. And the scriptures reveal that each of the male gods, whether Vishnu or Shiva or whoever, has a female counterpart, a Shakti, who is his energy. And without her, he has no potency. He's just a figurehead. So this is the deep secret at the root of all religions. This is the all-embracing, all-powerful form of sadhana and worship that gives all benefits and in the next video, I'm going to read you a list of those benefits, which is taken from the uh, greatest and most important and most powerful scripture of all, the Devi Mahatmya. Devi Mahatmya is a section from the Markandeya Purana. Markandeya is a great sage He's such a great sage that he actually survived the dissolution of the material world. 
He lived from one Mahakalpa to another, and he witnessed everything that happened. And then, in this Mahakalpa, he narrated it to various students. And so we have now the record of his realizations and observations. So he is probably the greatest authority as far as the most esoteric matters of spirituality and religion, because he actually saw the whole world destroyed and then recreated again. So he is an unmatched authority and he's given this Devi Mahatmyam as a way of worshiping the goddess. And the Devi herself acknowledges that this is the greatest prayer. This is the greatest and most powerful form of worship. And very interestingly, the process of doing this worship spans the entire range of the Chatur Darshanam, the four views that we have spoken of in many, many earlier videos. And that was given by Shankaracharya over a thousand years ago in his commentaries on the Vedanta. And the whole spiritual path encompasses these four views. So they begin with what's called the Dvaita Vada, the dualistic view that the world is real, I am my body, God is far away somewhere, and I have to worship him or her <laughs> through rituals and performance of sacrifices, charity, and welfare works. And if this is performed this is called karma yoga. If it's performed properly, it matures into bhakti yoga, where the uh, activities don't so much change, but the inner motivation for them does. Whereas in the beginning, one is concerned with one's own personal welfare. When karma yoga matures into bhakti, at that point, one becomes more or less wrapped up in love of God and seeing all creatures as God's children and wishing for their greatest benefit and so performs the same sacrifices with a different motivation and a different result, which is to give shelter and nourishment to all these lost children of God. And finally, when bhakti is mature, it automatically turns into meditation. And one is brought by the grace of Devi to the lotus feet of Narayan or Shiva. And at that point, one realizes Brahman in fullness huh? and has all the knowledge connected with that and it has all mystic powers and is fit to become a guru for the whole world. So this is the path. And the final stage is the Ajatavada. Ajatavada means one sees, like Markandeya, the whole deep inner structure of the world and how it's created and how we get trapped in it and also the means for release. And this is the entirety of the spiritual path from the beginning to the end, which leads to complete liberation from all material suffering. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.